We all taught the basics of electrostatics. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract. However, is it really true that two conductors positively charged always repel? In a paper published back in 2012 in the Royal Society, John Lechner shows that this assumption is not always true, but does hold true in one very important case. The implications of this analysis are quite profound for both objects on a large scale and also for the discussion about what might be the fundamental particle of charge. Firstly, it is important to point out that in the past it has both been experimentally and theoretically proven that attraction occurs between light charge conductors. This is nothing new. What is new about this paper is that it shows that attraction occurs in all cases except where the spheres have the same charge ratio, which would be obtained by them being brought into contact. Let's take a system of two spheres of radii A and B. There are a number of elements that are important to understand in this system. Firstly, the centres of mass are separated by a distance C, and the separation between the physical surface is a distance S. The first thing that we need to know is the potential energy of a system of n conductors with charges qi and potentials vi. Now the charge in this system would be given by qi is the sum of cij vj, where cij is the capacitance coefficient of the system. And this is defined by the following equations. Now important point here is that the dimensionless parameter u is related to a, b and c by the following equation. Now it is possible to calculate the electrostatic energy for the specified charges qi or the potentials vi on the conductors. This energy will be a function of the relative position of the conductors themselves. For a two body system this would yield w is a half qa va plus a half qb vb. Now if one of the spheres is Earth, this will always lead to an attractive force. The diagram shows how the potential energy of this system would change as the separation increases. Let's now consider two spheres with specific charges QA and QB. When the distance C between the centres of the spheres is large compared to their radii, it is possible to calculate the capacitance coefficient and hence the electrostatic energy in inverse powers of C. Now here are the first few terms of that equation, with the electrostatic energy of the spheres being the following. What is important to note here is that the negative term appears in the electrostatic energy even if the charges QA and QB on the two spheres have the same sign. Now an important point to realise is that two like charged spheres will cause the polarisation of the sphere creating a dipole moment. A surprise appears when you try and differentiate the potential energy with respect to the separation distance. This reveals that the force is always attractive unless the charges QA and QB are in a special ratio. And this will tend to occur when the two spheres come into contact. In reality, this may actually occur before then due to a discharge from one sphere to the other. But when this happens, the charges will redistribute themselves. So what does this all mean? The first important point is that at normal distances, so when they are not very close together, charges do indeed repel, but it is at short distances that they actually become attractive. And the attractive force far outweighs the repulsive force at these short distances. This attractive force is cancelled out only if the spheres have exactly the same charge ratio which would only normally occur if the two spheres came into contact. And at that point, the two spheres will repel. The attraction arises because as the spheres approach each other, a negative charge density appears around the pole of one of the spheres. We then have a configuration in which the nearby north and south poles of the two spheres have opposite charge, and the attraction of these near charges dominates over the repulsion of the overall light charges. So this paper shows that when dealing with spheres of many charges, we must consider that there is a short range attractive force irrespective of the charges and a longer range repulsive force for like charges. 
One aspect this may well touch on is that of the fundamental unit of charge. We have previously discussed when we looked at the concept of a fractal universe and how bubbles may hold many clues to some of the phenomena that we see that maybe one of the things we must consider is that a proton is made up of much smaller charges, possibly separated by a double layer. If this is the case, then using the logic outlined in this paper, could it be another way of explaining the strong nuclear force. At this stage it's just a hunch, but it may well point to the fact that the proton is not the fundamental unit of charge. There are, however, a number of problems that need to be overcome. Firstly, this would mean that protons in the nucleus could never touch, as the force would then repel. It would also mean that the charge ratio of the protons in the nucleus are all slightly different. Could it be that the protons outside the nucleus have come into contact with each other and are at a similar charge ratio and hence are only repulsive? I also wonder what implication this has for the larger charge bodies and their interaction at short and large distances. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.